welcome all who enter here as we gather round. We open the Book of Shadows and tell the tales of creatures who dwell in the darkness. This week we begin with a question for you. What will you do to contain evil? What cost would be too great? How many lives would you pay with? Last week I had some problems at home, so I did not make a video. For that I apologize. So I'm back tonight. With a new story for you that I hope you enjoy. I have a tiny request for you if you like these tales. Like, subscribe, click the bell, and comment. It is a small thing to ask, but it helps the channel to grow. Thank you. Now for our tale tonight. <clears throat> Maintaining peace. It was a lovely evening to go for a jog. Something Sarah had done every other night for four years now. She never carried any spray or protection as the neighborhood was considered very safe. She did not notice the man hiding in the shadows. He enjoyed watching her as she kept a steady pace, her blonde ponytail bouncing as she jogged. But he was not here for his pleasure. His goal was a lot darker in nature. He had years of practice hiding from people, using shadows for concealment. With him was a bottle of chloroform hidden in a pocket in his jacket. A small piece of cloth and some of the liquid would place his victim in a long sleep. He truly admired and desired the young woman for, before him, but he had to remain focused on her task. She must remain pure for her duty in the events to come. As she jogged by, a hand reached from the shadows. He held her as she struggled, the wet cloth on her mouth and nose. Soon she stopped moving, and he could tell she was unconscious. Carrying her small frame to his van, he closed the door to her freedom and the world she knew. Hands and feet were bound and her mouth taped shut. She would sleep for 30 minutes. Plenty of time to transport her to her new Temporary home. However, it was still wise and safe to keep her restrained until he made it to his destination. When Sarah awoke, she was tied to a chair. The rope was strong and tight, 
and her mouth was dry. She struggled, but the knots would not loosen. She cursed herself for not getting pepper spray or being more focused on her surroundings. But that was too late now. Those things were all in the past. She was not harmed or violated in any way. But she was still unsure of what the future held for her. Her host moved from the dark of the room. A tall man with gray hair. His eyes a dull gray. As he showed his hands were empty. He assured her that no harm would befall her. She was an honored guest and would be treated fairly. She was needed and would be the main guest at a banquet held in her honor. He would let her know when the banquet would take place. She tried to speak, but her mouth was still closed shut. Besides, his demeanor told her he would not listen, nor would he bargain. She was simply trapped here. The chair she sat in was carried to a furnished room. She was played gently on the floor. Her ropes cut. And the two men walked out the door without a word to her. The door was locked as she could hear the bolts moving into place. The same man's voice heard before was on the other side of the door. I said, you are an honored guest. The apartment shall be yours while you stay with us. It is furnished. You can control the temperature. And we have provided you with books to read. There are no cameras. Nor recording devices here. Whatever you wish to eat, simply let the man Outside of your door, no. Our cook is very talented. At one time, a master chef of a very exquisite restaurant. You have clothes in your size. Cable and a flat screen TV to watch. Now I know you must have questions for us. Rest assured your stay will be a brief one. If you choose to yell at me, I will not talk to you. But if you remain calm, I will answer your questions. The tall man spoke. Why am I here? What do you want from me? I do not have any money or family to ransom with. I am a simple school teacher. I have no idea why you chose me. Or what kind of sick game you're playing. Tell me, why am I here? Sarah questioned. No harm will come to you. And we know you do not have family, so there will be no ransom. We have watched you for a long time, Sarah. The answer is that you have been chosen as an ambassador of sort. 
we have knowledge of a being. One that few know exists. He has asked for you specifically. Although we don't know why or how he even knows of you. You will meet him in a few days. And then you can go back to your life. We will compensate you for your time. We only ask you to meet him. I apologize for taking such dark actions. But this was by his request. As a teacher, this is an excellent opportunity for you to be the first to meet and learn what you can from him. We will make you comfortable as we can for your stay. Simply ask, and we will comply. When I speak to you again, it will be time to meet him, spoke the strange man. What is your name? You can at least tell me that. She asked. My name does not matter. But. You can refer to me as Bob. He answered. Those were his final words. Bob. Was gone. Only silence remained as Sarah focused on her dilemma. She could try an escape plan. Nothing good would come from her in this situation. Why would they need to kidnap her if she was being honored? All of this made no sense. And the guard remained ever silent. In the days that followed, all her requests were granted. Her favorite food was made and served to her. Any drink of her choice. Whatever music she desired was made available. The one rule is there's no communication to the outside world. And no one would speak to her as much as she tried. For a guinea pig, she was well cared for. So what else to do was to wait. Wait for that day to come. She wondered what being would summon her. And why would he call her from any body else? That night she went to sleep and had a very uneasy feeling. Her instinct told her she would never sleep peacefully again. When she woke, she was restrained in a chair, just like before, bound and gagged. She knew escape was not an option. Bob was there, dressed in robes. The robe looked important, like a priest, but more colorful. She looked around and saw she was in a large and open area. He turned and looked at her as he caught a strange symbol on the ground before her. Then pain pierced her neck and the world became a blur 
as she fell asleep yet again. This time when she woke, she was untied, and Bob was gone. Beside her was an immense lake. The chilly air blew past her. She screamed for answers, but heard only the sea. This told her the lake must lead to an ocean, or at least a sea. The water was fresh as she reached in and tasted it. This may be her only chance to escape. That was when she heard Bob's voice echo throughout the area. The language was strange to her. But one word stuck. Yamangard. The name sounded familiar, as if she heard it before. Then she realized when she heard it, and where she heard it before. Her eyes opened wide, her mouth dropped. Now she remembered the tale she heard. The Norse had a legend of a serpent so large it would entangle the earth and swallow its own tail. It was called the Midgard Serpent and its name was Yomongard. What could the purpose of her meeting this monster be? Unless she was to be sacrificed. Now it made sense. She was untouched by a man. That is why they did not harm her. She needed to be pure and whole. To satisfy the beast. She looked on the ground for a weapon but found none. Only sand. Then her heart stopped as fear took over her mind. She saw ripples in the water. She knew there was no escape in this monster. And if he's as big as legend says he is, this may be her last moment on earth. She knelt and prayed to her God, but he chose to remain silent. Something moved within the water. Something large. In the distance, she saw eyes. Large and yellow. Even far away, they were the size of two buses. Fear gripped her as she screamed. A sound of pure terror. She ran away from the water. Back to a wall and a door. But the door was locked. And it did her no good. A large snake-like tongue emerged from the water. A tongue that dwarfed her as it hit her. 
the weight was massive, crushing her body with his size alone. He wrapped around her and dragged her into a large cavern full of teeth and dripping saliva. She slid down a tunnel full of dampness into a large wet pit. Her screams echoed up the throat but her mouth had already closed. The beast satisfied with the offering made as acid from the stomach quickly dissolved the young lady. Bob watched from a camera, enjoying the mayhem as he sat safely at his desk. He turned and marked a day on the calendar. The day was December 20th. The next day would be the winter solstice. And the great serpent was happy with his sacrifice. It was meant to please the beast. So Ragnarok will not happen this year. Soon another victim would be found. Observed. Kidnapped. And prepped for sacrifice. I mean, lives have been lost. Bob honestly no longer cared. But one day he knew he would be sacrificed to the monster as well.